attracting the right people and keeping your vision in focus, in focus every day. This is the Brian Covey Show. Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Brian, and welcome back to another episode of The Brian Covey Show. So this week's going to be a little bit different. I'm excited to have one of my friends, and I'm actually a client, and we're going to walk you through in this season what I believe is very important for all of us. Whether you have kids going back to school, you're an athlete in your training, or you're just trying to find some rest and some restoration and actually how you can recover and take care of your health. It's probably one of the things I hear the most during the season where we've all been home more and things have been disrupted is how do I actually take care of myself? So we've got Ken Bailey on. So Kenny's over at the recovery lounge in Franklin, Tennessee, where I'm based Mm -hmm. out of and Kenny, welcome. I can't wait to dive into some of this with you. Sure. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Well, I know we, when we first met, we had a connection because you guys actually moved from California here not too long ago and you had a little bit of a, a different background. So, Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, how you got here, and just we'll kind of dive in and shift into then, you know, opening the recovery lounge here in Franklin. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. And thanks for having me, by the way. This is great. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I was in California six years ago working for a healthcare technology company. So I was working for companies like Intel and a spinoff of Intel and GE called Care Innovations. Um, Had an opportunity to come to sort of the home of healthcare in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. started working for a company called Healthways, putting together new models, um, and then did a couple of other assignments as sort of chief revenue officer for a, another company called Lurio, which was a startup company. Nice. Um, my theme in, you know, for healthcare was, you know, my job was to basically find new innovations, find new things that could be a plausible business and figure out how to spin those into plausible businesses. So this kind of uh, healthcare has been sort of, gosh, I want to say 20 years now. That's kind of a scary thing to think of, but yeah. yeah doing that for quite a while well that's similar you know i laugh people all the time like so it's been in the mortgage business for almost 20 years myself and it's like but there's all these things outside of what we do day to day and and i loved how we were talking about you were you're very much involved in like the health side of things but the recovery Mm -hmm. lounge you know i think is serving a need today that a lot of people don't know really how to slow down and recover they don't know all of the the treatments and maybe the options available to take care of themselves and 20 years ago I mean, when I was still playing soccer, it's one of those things where you, you yeah. didn't take care of yourself and you didn't have the tools you do today. Um, and you guys offer some cool things. So usually what I hear people talk about is cryotherapy. So yeah, I figure I would, you know, bring that up and just, you know, what is that? It seems to be probably one of the more popular options with mm-hmm. people. But you know, I get that question a lot. Hey, Brian, do you do cryo? Have you tried this? And yeah. I'm sure you guys get that question all the time. Yeah. And cryotherapy is one of our, one of our therapies that we provide, I think. Um, and we can certainly talk about it. To us, it's we're providing recovery, and one of the tools we happen to use is cryotherapy. Uh, cryotherapy is basically taking uh, big tanks of nitrogen, blowing super cold air into a booth. We our particular cryotherapy unit goes up to your neck. Uh, it can go down to negative two hundred degrees. Uh, wow. And what it's designed to do was mimic sort of how the body reacts when it's when it's out in the cold. It takes all of that blood and, and brings it into the core and protects those organs. When it does that, your endorphins get a rush, you get uh, an adrenaline rush, you get uh, super oxygenated blood, all that super oxygenated blood is built up as you step out. It's a three minute long process. Um, all that super oxygenated blood comes back out into your body. Um, it's it's really good for anti-inflammation. It's good for a myriad of things. Uh, increases your immunity. It does a lot of stuff. And it's just a lot of fun because it's just, it's a new kind of, it makes noise and it's um, it's a lot of really cold air uh, coming at you all at once. And most people find out the bark is actually worse than a bite. So I mean, we yeah. have a high school kid in that went negative 200 and she just sort of stopped and went, yeah, that's all right. And we have yeah. some people that like go nuts when they're at negative 150. But uh, overall, the benefits are fantastic though. And they're lasting benefits, which is what we really enjoy. And that's what I love. And it's probably, most people love it too, because you think about uh, like the three minutes or less, it's like, you know, yeah. as Americans, like we want the quick fix, like put me in for yeah. three minutes, make me new again. Yeah. You know, what, what I've heard a lot of people during the season is a lot of people really aren't 
slowing down quite a bit. And it's, it's funny, I hear these numbers are like productivity is through the roof. And when we know certain industries are extremely busy and yet I'm still finding people are not slowing down. And so I don't know what you see, but you, you probably have people come in when I don't know if they're pro, pro, kind of proactive or they get to the point where they're worn out um, and they realize they have to come in. But what are some ways as you guys, cause, cause you talked about more of a holistic, what are some ways some people can find really for them, how to recover well? Like what are some of those options mm -hmm. for them? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, for us, like when we built a recovery lounge, what we wanted to do was have a combination of a couple different things. One was the physical things to have. So the cryotherapy, the uh, compression therapy, the um, stretch therapy, those kind of cupping is the other thing we have. But we also built the environment to be uh, mental recovery first. So when you, you come in and you've been in there, Brian, what we're trying to do is, is just have your brain sort of relax first because once your brain relaxes the rest of your body you know can relax as well and so if you have an environment that's just really tense and it's a clinical like environment you you do this uh, we've had people literally drop their shoulders when they sat down in the chairs and just took time for themselves so to your point um people are this their their shoulders are up it's yeah. it's, it's it's uh the strange to your point of what am i going to do in the middle of a pandemic and trying to take care of my family what i'm going to do with my children getting back to work how do i get back to work this is is a big deal. So to drop that, uh, and the irony is when people go in, for example, the cryo booth, uh, you know, they come in like, oh my gosh, it's going to be cold. The first thing we tell them is drop your shoulders yeah. and relax. And I think to your point, what people need to do is be mindful at home about the time that they, just like you would schedule time in your in your office environment, you need to schedule time to just relax. And that's not a physical relaxation unto itself. That's necessary, but not efficient. You know, sufficient. What you need to do is also have that mental. You know, obviously drink plenty of water, get plenty of sleep, all those standard kind of things. And we write about that, by the way, if you go to Nashville Fit Magazine, we have an article on why recovery matters and the three things you can do. So nice. we, we wrote an article on that specifically to say, calm it down, take time, make sure you take that mental mental time to also. So if that's yoga for you, if that's put on headphones and listen to Zen music, uh, make sure that's a that's a purposeful point of your day, I think would be the best way to say it. Yep. And that's what I love. So I'll, I'll plug it right back to that Nashville Fit Magazine. And I remember reading mm -hmm. some of that. And, and I think that's what you nailed something I think is really important for all of us is it's something I had to learn was actually scheduling, like even coming in and getting mm -hmm. treatments done or getting anything done that's important to us. If we don't schedule it, it's yep. probably not going to happen because I've realized I'm probably not just, you know, getting to a point in the day that I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to drive over to the recovery lounge this afternoon and yeah. drop in. And so I found scheduling that. You guys have made it pretty easy. I know for myself, like coming in each week and now I'm almost, I think five or six weeks in and it has yeah. become part of my week and the compound effect. I can feel that difference versus coming once and waiting a month. It's almost yeah. like if you worked out once and you waited a few weeks, worked out again, yeah, probably don't get much better. Yeah. And then that's, I think that's a great point that you have. I mean, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to elevate the idea of recovery to being just as important as the workout. So when you ask people like yourself, like, Hey, what does your workout regime look like? They can rattle it off. Like, Oh, I'm doing this this week and Tuesday I'm doing this and Wednesday I'm doing this. It's like, great. Hey, what's your recovery plan look like between those? And it's like, uh, I think I'm going to stretch. I may roll. So what we're trying to do as, as not just yeah, you know, obviously it's, it helps us out, but we're trying to elevate recovery as saying, look, that's just as important as a workout itself. Because if you don't do recovery, you're going to have a, your workout's going to be not as good as the next time and you risk injury and nobody wants that. 100%. 100%. So. And I've realized that because I just turned 43 and it was one I was looking, I was like, okay, if I still want to continue and, and mm -hmm. train hard at, at Iron Tribe and continue to get better and keep up yeah. with the kids and, you know, yeah. mobility and all these things start to come into play. I think a lot of people have kind of discounted that. And, and what right. I have learned is, you know, it's an interesting, you guys had shared this with me is if you are training that way or, or you're a runner or biker, or whatever mm -hmm. your, your, um, your jam is for your workout, you really, the recovery part of stretching has become yep. so much more important. And, and I love that because you almost enter in when you come in to the lounge and you, you can, you can learn while you're there, while yep. you're getting treatment done, you know, I found I've, I've picked up. So, do you guys have anything that like when people come in, typically, are they coming in? You said, I know the shoulders are up, they're stressed. Yeah. Are they coming in mainly because of, of stress? Are they coming in mainly because, you know, they're trying that they're athletes and trying to get a better recovery or is it just all across? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, when you open up new businesses, you have sort of a certain target market that you go after, right? Hey, I think we're going to go after this and it's going to be athletes. And we call, you know, our, our 
motto is make rest day your best day. Um, so we assumed athletes were, will, will uh, be able to come to us and they have, and which is great. The, the pleasantly surprising thing is to your point, people are coming in just because they want to feel better throughout their day. They yeah. want to have more balance. They, they're tired of being sore when they, when they walk up the stairs. And so they come in and say, Hey, can you guys help us out? Uh, you know, we, we like to joke around your muscle doesn't really care how it got sore. It can get sore from, you know, an elite athlete or can get sore from a couch to 5k. We don't care. And we yeah. applaud everybody that has a goal that they're doing. The other part, Brian, that I think was kind of interesting when you said you're 43 and you know, you're, you're trying to do that. The other half of what we're working on are student athletes to try to get them to learn those habits. So it, again, we don't, we don't, when you come in, it's not that we're going to throw you in a, in a piece of equipment and say, hey, good luck. If you, yeah. if you want to cry on that's all you want to do. And you're like, I know it. I love it. Just give me in and out. Bless you. Yeah. What we're trying to do with student athletes is train them to say, look, let's make sure that your program, your recovery program is just as good as your other program. That way they can take They can go to college and be on them and not turn into someone that's like, oh, man, I should have done that. If we can train those kids how to do it now, that's that's never a bad thing. When I remember you know, college soccer, it really recovery was not so much yeah. it was an off day, but it wasn't programmed like you see today in, in professional exactly. athletes. It's much better on, OK, let's make sure your recovery lines up. And mm -hmm. I remember reading that that Nashville um, fit article. I was trying to remember back. Do you remember the three tips there? I'm curious for those that, that may not go check it out later. But I remember it was the, drinking a lot of water because I've been. Yeah, you're going to put me on the spot because I haven't read that in a while. So yeah. um, it was drink. I think it was drink plenty of fluids, you know, do the sleep thing. Um, I think it was be mindful. You know, I don't remember the third one. So now I have to go look it up. Sleep was, um, I do remember the sleep. We were talking about this the other day, and this was a tip um, that Kayla gave me is sleeping on your back. And some of these things you start to learn. Mm -hmm. So I've been learning about water and, you know, how, how you sleep, how much you sleep, the quality mm -hmm. of your sleep. Yeah. And what I have learned on that recovery side is my sleep has gotten better. And oh, great. And I was that's that's one of those kind of byproducts that you come in yeah. and know what's going to be there. But I, I've watched people, even on our own team, you know, we're all remote. We get on these Zoom calls and you can just tell to your point earlier, you got mm -hmm. some people, they just come in, just they're all pent up, stressed. Yeah. And it's hard because you're like, hey, how do I get them to recover? And yeah. so maybe if they couldn't come in, they don't have a recovery lounge. They're not in Franklin yeah. or nearby. Are there things outside of, you know, the sleep and the water that you guys would recommend or resources for them so they could do some of this maybe on their own to start their journey. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think movement, there's two things that kind of generally occur. So when we, when we look at people, if you, if you distill down what we're really trying to do, one of them is around range of motion and trying to continue to kind of focus on those areas, those hips, those shoulders, there's other areas, especially, uh, and my wife's been on zoom call. She's on zoom call from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, so, you know, sitting in that position the whole time. So being able to kind of stand up and be able to get those muscles to stretch and be able to take those breaks, but being able to, to do that is really, really important. The other part that we try to do is if you have a roller or anything else, anything to move blood yes. is always a good thing. That's, that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're trying to get those, those muscles and joints to, to kind of get that balance. And then the second thing we try to do is that's what cryotherapy does. That's what compression therapy does is we get that blood to move so that you can get that kind of stale blood out and get, especially if you're, you know, so she runs at five thirty in the morning. Bless her, I can't do that. You know, um, and then sits down on a Zoom call so that now she's stiff all day, so she can yeah. continue to do that. And I'm using her as an example because I think she's a uh, she's a great example of kind of the typical. I think what you're seeing are those people that work at home. And that's you've seen it, and they're on Zoom calls now, and they don't realize like yeah. you got to get up and move and and move around. Yeah. And to your exactly. point, we incorporated some of the rollers and then the lacrosse balls yeah. and all. Exactly. And you know, hopefully what people will take from this as you're listening is there really are, are, are not excuses if we can find solutions to them. And just because you're working from home, I mean, even use this wall as an example, battle or cross ball or something. I mean, I could roll that if I had stiffness exactly. in my shoulder and just to find ways that you can actually take care of yourself if you're going to be sitting or standing on calls because mm -hmm. you're right. I think that's where things have moved to. And even if people go back to their offices more, these are still habits. You know, it's not like you're going to show up to the office one day and go, now I got it figured out. Now I'm going to, you know, recover. Better. Yeah. And I think that you, you hit the right word and that's habits, right? And that's yeah. one of the things that we're trying to teach folks and irrespective of us or not, if you come to us, great. If you don't, that's fine too, but create those habits, like you said, and it takes a couple of weeks to get those habits to ingrain, but the cumulative effect and what you saw was a cumulative effect after four or five weeks of just creating that habit. 
you start seeing a much better benefit, better sleep, uh, better clarity. Uh, hopefully your workouts are better. Um, I mean, you're slinging big iron, so uh, you, know, you need all that. It's all relative. I tell you, it's all relative. <laughs> it's, it's, there's always somebody that's going to be stronger and faster than you exactly. in there. And you're like, if you, if you do your best, what I've learned is, yeah. you know, if I can go in there and have the proper recovery, then the training's more enjoyable, right? Because I think for all of yeah. us, regardless of where you are and your, your athletic ability, if you show up to a gym and you're working out in a class, you don't, you don't want to be the person that's struggling all the time, right? There may be yeah. a movement that day that's tough for you and you try to get better which is part of the growth and the challenge. But, mm -hmm. but if you're the person that's coming in every time struggling and you're always sore and you, you yeah. know, you, you can't do any of the movements there, you probably a little bit are going to be defeated personally. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, and that's like, well, if I can show up and, and have outside of the gym pieces done with the proper recovery, being hydrated and being ready, yeah. well, at least I put myself in a spot that, Hey, that day I'm going to get a great, great workout, which is going to make me feel better. It's going to you mm -hmm. know, stimulate mentally. It's going to be a challenge that I've overcome, which I believe sure. huge, huge correlation into what we do outside uh, of that gym. And so I, I look at it and go, the people that you can tell are recovering better come back mm -hmm. in and, and you're able to enjoy your, your fitness and health journey even more. Yeah. And if nothing else, we, we actually talked to one of the parents of the, the, the teens and we were used as the sort of the carrot at the end of the week. Like, look, Oh. You know, I know these workouts are not fun, but at the end of it, you know, because they're doing, you know, two a days on some of these kids, especially travel teams. And you know that from soccer. Yeah. Um, you know, this is going to be your this is going to be your your prize, if you will. At the end, you get a, the ability to kind of relax for an hour, put on some compression pants, get some cryo. And that's that, you know, do well there. And, you know, that could be part of, you know, part of the. Uh, which I think it was kind of funny that, again, it's we learn stuff every day. We learn from our customers on sort of. Yeah, we 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 try to be responsive to how, how we see those customers coming in. Yeah. I'm pleasantly, like I said, pleasantly surprised once in a while on what we're, what we buy. Well, I like that with, with my oldest daughter, who's, you know, goalkeeper playing soccer and all that. I found that she loves one of the smoothies there. Yep. So I'm like, okay, cool. She's training really hard. And, and that could be something that we incorporate in as, Hey, you've been training. Let's take you in for one of the recovery yep. sessions. You can get your favorite smoothie. Yep. I mean, when, Show when, an hour, be able to i mean we have people fall asleep i mean they literally put headphones on lay back in the chair um put on the compression pants and they're out and we have to tap them on the shoulder and say hey you know yeah so you know you've been here an hour you may want to <laughs> they're like oh my gosh you know i mean that's not that's not terrible that we you know but how cool is that point. Point. getting out of the the grind and everything that because i go back to we, we see these numbers and we watch it with our sales yeah. team how much productivity is up, but also look at how many hours are people are putting in. It's not that they cut their hours back for many of us. The hours are still there, if not more, but the productivity went up also. So now you're just really putting it all together and you can see why some people are getting a little bit exhausted. And I think it's one of those, if you don't schedule this in, you know, and if you take anything from, from listening today is scheduling this in is just as important as that next meeting or, you know, wherever you're possibly investing in your, your gym or where you work out is put, put some, you know, of your budget aside to recover, because if not, yeah. you know, I, I've just found at some point you get, get to where your body starts giving you feedback on, Hey, yep. we appreciate the workouts, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're not recovering. And, you know, you see the guys that are like, Hey, you know, I'm training seven days a week. And it's like, cool. If one of those seven days is actually, you know, mobility and recovery. Yeah, exactly. and awesome. Um, yeah. And one of the dangers I think that, that you see with the work from home style is it's so easy to just not separate it. When you had a, when you had a location to go to, you can leave that location. You're both physically and mentally leaving that location. And yeah, people have been on their phones. I mean, I've been, you know, living on a phone as a, as a, you know, the head of sales too. And I, I can get that, but when you have a home-based office, it's so easy just to just to dribble that into you know now it's early evening and now hey I just got a couple of things I got to finish and before you know it to your point you you know you're you're like I'm starving I'm tired I don't want to do anything and that's, yeah. that's really kind of the dangerous thing. Yep, and that's where I think people today it's like they know they need to do it and yep. have you seen anything on those that why people usually commit versus the ones that don't? Is it similar to gym where? You, know, you see people come in, sometimes they don't commit to the gym, like they'll come in, test mm -hmm. it out. But is there anything with the recovery piece, like coming in and working with you guys, do they, do they usually commit for different reasons? Like you said that you got a lot of wide range of people that are coming in, 
But I, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting because I wrote a LinkedIn article yesterday about sort of why buy, why buy now, and why buy from us, right? And a typical gym has sort of the why buy and why buy now. I'm out of shape. I need to go do it. The why buy from us is where they fight, right? Yeah. Uh, you need to either do ITF or you need to row or you need to do a hit or you need to cross, you know, whatever, right? Oh. So the why buy from us is the part. What we're working on is sort of the why buy and why buy now. And what we're finding is the theme that comes in. Unfortunately, there's this kind of undercurrent. I don't want to say a frustration, but I guess there's a frustration to your point. Like, wow, I'm 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 at the gym four days a week, or I'm trying to do this thing three or four days a week, and it's just it's starting to mentally and physically tear me down. And when they come in, they realize like, oh wow. So our again, our job is to elevate that sort of recovery as just as important as the workout. So. I think people that commit to saying, yeah, I, 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 classic thing, right? If I continue to bang my head against the wall and I get the same result, you know, stop banging your head. So if you're continuing to do this thing and it's not working and the fun part for us is to see that light bulb come on. Yeah. Is to go, whoa, like this is not, it, it's um, sometimes when you roll, for example, you have to grit your teeth. I mean, I have an IT band that when I, you know, it is, you're not right. looking forward to it, right? <laughs> on this one, I mean, you know, you're sitting in recovery and compression pans for, you know, for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, it's kind of, like I said, people fall asleep on it. You know, the idea of getting sure. that three minute rush is kind of cool. So it's, uh, uh, you know, stretch therapy, I think it's a little different. I mean, stretch therapy, yeah, you're going to, at times you're going to be like, woo, but it's somebody that's helping you get through that, somebody to guide you through it. Um, and that to me is, I think, the, the common denominator that we see through that is people are starting to say, okay, this is important. I've been doing X and X is not working as great as it is. What if I tried something different? And they're like, wow, okay, I get it now. It's it's almost like, yeah, I get it now would be the, yeah. the theme. Yeah, that's what I've reminded people. That many people, they've asked me when I'm saying, hey, you know, I'm doing this and I'm and I'm trying to work on my water and, and diet and train and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, you know, it's almost like the gym where you, you can't really expect in a week or honestly, even in a month, you know, if you're going uh -huh. once or twice a week to yeah. get that real stimulus and, and to out work what you've done over years, but yeah. committing to something that's like, okay, I know this is going to be good for me. And and I've really been trying to promote this as I think there's a under discussion that's not being talked about a lot about the mental health of, yeah. like you said earlier, of we used to have this really defined routine where you were at home and you would eat, sleep, you know, have family time, you would go to an office and you got away. Yeah. And then, you know, all the, especially guys that traveled and people that had those roles, now that is just not the world we live in. So if you're not able to yeah. create a space that you can go relax, ooh, I mean, at some point, like the stress, you, you yeah. might think you can deal with it, but you need a place you can go relax. And that's what I found there was kind of cool. It's like, I know when I go in there, I know that's my time to like just to go relax exactly. and and to, to get away. And then when I'm in the office and now the home office, it's like, okay, that's, that's when I'm putting the work mm -hmm. here, the gym, but you almost have to create spaces again. Yeah. You guys have done that. When you come in, it's it's very inviting and very much like, okay, now what am I going to do today? You know, as far as recovery and relaxing. Yeah, and and thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, we did we uh, when I did the market research on this, you know, recovery is a, a, a burgeoning market, which is great. It's, you know, we're sort of blue ocean opportunity on this one. Yeah. Um, the the issue that I saw again was uh, everyone had piece parts. It's sort of like everyone's got weights, but uh, you know, just because yeah. you have the same thing doesn't mean you approach it the same way. And for us, we just didn't make a lot of sense to have a lot of sort of go to a front desk and you know check in and hurry up and recover. It just didn't make a lot of sense to us. So we built the place specifically to be when you come in. I mean, we've got you know we've got uh, you know relaxed environment. We have a bar. I mean, we intentionally made that bar. Um, that was non-trivial when it came to building that thing out, but it, it lends to the environment to, to say, okay, I'm not, okay, this is a place where I'm not in a rush and we don't rush anybody out the door. We're, we're yeah. proud to say we have people come in, sit down for 45 minutes, just to have a smoothie and, and talk and just kind of hang out. And that's, we have running groups that show up on Monday nights because this is a great place to meet and these people can, you know, chill out. And that's what we want to be able to do. Have a great run, come back, you know, you need a water. We got it. If you don't, that's okay too. Just, you know. Well, I think that that's, that's really cool too, as people are, are listening in that whether, whether you're running a small business or you've got a large team to think about the environment you're creating when your mm -hmm. customers come in and, and your team members, your employees that are they're part of your group. Yeah. Like when they come in, you know, what's that environment create? And we talk about that a lot is just create that environment that's going to bring the energy that you want 
whether that's relaxing mm-hmm. or coming into, you know, an environment like the gym where you're going to be you know, different yeah. energy, music's going to be up and, and going there. So as we wrap up, I'd be curious to know the, the people that are listening in or check this out later. I know we talked about the, we'll redirect them back to the Nashville Fit Magazine so they can mm-hmm. check out that article. But what would you say the people that are really excelling at this, you know, like they, they've got it figured out and dialed in. What are some of the key things they're doing to optimize, like maximize their recovery that others of us that are learning and on the journey or may not be doing anything could start to do? Yeah. And I think it, it, the theme, I think we're coming out of this one, Brian, is, is the idea of schedule, right? So when you see, when we see pro athletes coming in, they're coming in, um, some of the pro athletes are coming in because they know that this is their day that they need to do this. It's not a coincidence that they're coming in. They're coming in intentionally on this day because this is the day that they need to be able to do that. And yeah. they schedule time to be able to do that. Um, I think that's what separates the folks that got it nailed is uh, uh, they understand it. And when they understand it, they take time to do that. And they and they say, that, again, once they have it in their in their weekly kind of schedule, like this is what I'm going to do. And it doesn't have to be hundred percent us. I mean, you can do an active recovery where if you, if yoga is something that you just need to quiet yourself at home and be able to do that, but just take that to say, look, I know three days a week, I'm going to do this. This, this is the two days a week that I'm going to, that I'm going to take and making sure I'm mindful about what I'm going to do to, to be a little bit more um, relaxed and try to get that recovery. And if you can do that, those are the people that have it. It's just like anything else. I have a program, yeah. any, like I, you know, I, I do races, you know, if I don't have a specific program for those races, I'm not going to get to the line. I'm not going to feel good, right? Because I have a specific day. I know what days I'm going to do what. And it doesn't have to be earth shattering calendar ideas. It just needs to be, okay, active recover on these days and, 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 and mean it. I guess that would be the other thing. They, they're, they're intentional about it. They mean it. They, yeah. This is not something that, that, you know, is number six on the depth chart. They can just say, hey, I'm just going to cross that off. It's, 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 you know, one or two on the depth chart. So. I love that. And that, that it kind of it comes full circle because everything that we usually talk about on the podcast and, and with the guests is you have an intentionality and in actually mm-hmm. taking back ownership of your life yeah. and the things that you choose to do. And this is definitely this season has proven that for a lot of us, we, we might have had certain aspects of our health or our mental health going well, but there's probably areas that we were opened up to like, wow, th- this is different. And I need to make sure I'm paying attention to that so that my, not only my mental health, but my physical health, they're, they're on the, the level that I need them to be to perform and, and be a great dad, leader, you know, athlete, whatever it is we're trying to be. So exactly. it's awesome. Um, I think, you know, plugging you guys in Franklin will be great. So everybody that's listening around Nashville, I, I will personally attest to <laughs> incredible environment. Great, it. great services that um, I've really just enjoyed because you know, training and, and I'm not necessarily the athlete anymore, but still training pretty hard. It's fantastic. And I can't wait to get my, my daughter up there. Uh, she loves the smoothies. So that'll be kind of the, <laughs> come in for that. Let's get some compression as you're training hard and there you go. take care of all that. Well, tell everybody where they can find you. I know you guys are on social and all that, but that way mm-hmm. after the show, if they're listening to this, where can they sure. find out more about you or the recovery lounge? Sure. Uh, we're at the recovery lounge.co, not .com. Um, We'll buy that later. Uh, and then we're on uh, Recover Lounge TN on Insta and uh, Facebook. So, and then we're downtown Franklin next to the factory. If you guys are local, um, we'd be excited to have you to at least stop by and say hi. We, we like, we love to have people come in and just check the place out and see what you think. I mean, think for, you know, look for yourself and if it's something you like, great. If it's not your jam, that's okay too. But yeah, you know, hey, please come by and say hi. Cool. Definitely check them out. We'll put the links in the bio and everything that we have in the show notes. So this has been great because I know for me during this season, one of the things that I've tried to lean in and I've learned from is like, I need to recover more and take care of myself in that area that you can only go so long in the hundred mile an hour zone until you crash. And so my, my advice, everybody, if you're listening in guys is be intentional about it. We shared that several times and schedule this so you don't crash and burn. You get ahead of that and you get the rest and really the recovery that you need to perform as an athlete, mom, dad, whatever it is that you have as your goals. So, Kenny, thank you. This has been great. I know I've learned a lot. Can't wait to see you guys this week again. And I appreciate everything that you're doing in the community and and really just pointing people back to how they can live a balanced and more healthy lifestyle. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.
Cool, guys. Well, this has been another episode of The Bride and Kobe Show. Make sure you check us out. And if you would like, subscribe, and make sure you leave some comments over there on iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all that. You can check out more at briancovey.com or, of course, over on Instagram at the Brian Covey. Make sure you guys follow along and see what the Recovery Lounge continues to do because you're probably going to see success stories and things there. And we would just challenge you, find what works for you and get your recovery up to the level you need it to be so you can perform at your optimal level. Thanks, guys. See you next time.